What does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. So today I'm very excited for checking out Caveman Curling from Eagle Griffin Games. This is for two to six players, take about 15 minutes to play, and it's for ages seven plus. And in Caveman Curling, you're going to be taking some rocks and you're going to be flicking them in a curling-esque game. But along the way, you're also going to have some special abilities like relics and hammers that you'll be able to move stuff and save stuff and do some other quirky things like that. It's light, simple, dexterity, but is it good? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Caveman Curling. So first and foremost, we've got our handy dandy rule sheet. It's one page, one sided, the back's just advertisement. And it's pretty well done. It should teach you how to run the game and play pretty smoothly. I will say I wish they clarified the scoring just a little bit better. It says... Uh, when all rocks have been thrown, the round ends and scoring happens. Scoring is exactly like curling or pentanka or bocce. And it's like, okay, don't tell me that. Just tell me how the scoring works. And they do tell you a little bit about how it works. And you can kind of figure it out. But a picture would have been really helpful instead of, you know, this picture of these two cave girls holding something. So there. Put a picture there instead of this random picture of cave girls doing something that they clearly just stole off the board. But anywho, the rule booklet, though, for the most part, is well done and should have you up and running in no time at all. This is also the kind of game where once you know what you're doing, you'll probably never need the rule booklet ever again. So let's take a look at the components, and then we'll get into the gameplay. And I'm going to be talking about the game as if it is a two-player game. You can play it with more players, but it's just going to be a team game where then you're going to, you know, be splitting up your rocks. So essentially, you could play four players, but it's just you get three rocks, your teammate gets three rocks, and yeah. So it ideally is a two-player game, even though you can play it with a large player count. So first, you're going to have your nice little board right here, which is actually like kind of like thick parchment paper, and it's perfectly serviceable. I also really like the artwork on it, but that's your mileage may vary kind of thing. It has like a little Where's Waldo vibe going on where there's lots of different stuff to see, which I think is cool, except for at the top. Apparently, they got really lazy up the top and just decided, yeah, we're done. There's tons of stuff here, tons of stuff there. They don't need stuff at the top which doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, but anywho, it's going to be held down with like this, this magnetic thing. It's really, really cool. These are magnetic and they're very nicely done and they hold the board down pretty well, even though it will slide from time to time, uh, but still very nicely done. And the way you actually store this in the box, I don't normally talk about box storage, but I think it is something that I should talk about here, is you're going to roll up this parchment paper and then you're going to slide it in here. So the box is kind of an odd shape, which pro or con really depends on how your storage situation is handled at your house. So next, each team is going to get this stuff right here. And the primary thing you're going to have, you're going to have six rocks. And when you first get the game, you'll have to put the stickers on there. But luckily, the stickers are not too big, which is always a good thing. I wish they were a tiny bit smaller. But yeah, you're going to put them on here. You're going to get six rocks, which you will be flicking down there. And then you're going to get six special items. Now, these special items you'll want to use diligently. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. No. Uh, you have six rocks and you have six special items. And they say in the rules... Uh, you can use all the special items you want during a round, but you can't use it more than once a round. So you have six rocks, six special items. I'll talk more about that in the pros and cons, but that's what you need to know. And there's two different types. So first you're going to have these little hammers, which will allow you to move stuff. So say for instance, you had this, then you could put that right there, and then you get to move it. Boom and hooray, now I'm on the outside of the circle. Uh, also, these ones do the same thing, but shorter distances. You also can put a totem on your rock, and if that totem ever falls off, you have two choices that you can either reflick this rock or you can uh, keep the spot. So, for instance, uh, if someone were to do this and then it got knocked over there, you could say, All right, I'm going to re hit this rock. So, it's kind of going to make you hedge your bets on where your rocks are. So, on your turn, it's very self explanatory. What you're going to do is you're going to go behind this line here, you're going to try and flick it all the way into that circle there. Now, the person that's going to score, and only one team will score per round, is the team that is closest to the center. So if you have the two closest rocks to the center, and then, so let's actually just say, I have this and this, and my opponent has that, I would score two points because I have the two ones that are closest to the center, but only one team will be scoring at a time. Those are bocce rules or pancreas or whatever the heck the name of that game is. So on your turn, you're going to go behind this line and you are going to try and flick it. At this point, you could use one of your special abilities if you would like. So yeah, I might do that. Boom. And I would flip this over because I can't use it anytime after this round. 
then we would alternate doing that same thing. Once everybody has hit all their rocks, you're going to see who's going to score this round. They will score however many points they score. And then you're going to flip back over your special abilities and you're going to rinse, wash, and repeat until someone has six points. Uh, two, both teams have six points. You'll play an additional round, a tiebreaker round. And whoever has the most points to win the game will be the winner of Caveman Curling. And that, in a nutshell, ooh, raised edge, is going to be the winner of the game. Alrighty then, Caveman Curling from Eagle Griffin Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. Two to six players, but you need to take that with a grain of salt, because as soon as you go over two players, it becomes a team game, which just means you're going to have less rocks that you're going to be flicking. So if you don't like team games, obviously, probably going to be a turnoff. But if you do like team games, well then, that's good for you. Now, gameplay-wise, one thing that really, really annoyed this annoyed me with this game and bogs down the game, in my personal opinion, are the special ability tokens. Now, I love special abilities in games. I love when people take a game and they make it a little bit more gamey. And that's what they did with these special ability tokens, the relics and the hammers that you can use. But they did it very, very poorly. So you have six special abilities that tokens that you can use. You have four hammers, uh, two big hammers, two small hammers, and two relics, which sounds great. But here's the thing. It says in the rules that you get to use all of those tokens and those relics and those hammers during a round, and then you get them back at the beginning of the next round. Now, here's where the problem. You have six special ability tokens, and you have six rocks that you get to flick, which means you're going to be using these special ability tokens pretty much every single turn. And as the Incredibles have taught us, if everybody's special, then nobody's special. But here's the thing. It just bogs down the game a little bit. What should be a very quick, simple, light game, like a crocodile or a tumble and dice, slows down because someone's like, oh, I'm gonna use this token, and then I'm gonna use this token, or I'm gonna use my relic right here. Hmm, do I wanna use this? Do I wanna do that? It just, it just bugs the crap out of me, and we house ruled it, and we house ruled it after the very first game to be that you get to use these tokens over the span of the entire game which means using a token is actually a choice instead of just something that you're handed every single time. Um, any other cons that I have with the game, you know, it's incredibly light, it's incredibly simple, it's flicking, it's dexterity, which is going to be an immediate turnoff to some people. Some people are not going to like the box because the box size is a little bit wonky, but I actually personally like the box. We'll talk more about that in the pros. Uh, I wish the rules had a picture of how the scoring works instead of just assuming you know how curling or bocce or pink wit or something like that is played. It still does a decent job of explaining how to score, and the rules are very, very simple at its core, but I still think a picture would have been good there. But that's all I got on the uh, con side. But the biggest con that I have in this, actually, I should say, is that the game is okay. Like, that's the biggest con. In a hobby of good, great, spectacular, fantastic, mind-blowing, this is just okay. And, and I think that's kind of why you haven't heard too much about this game, even though it came out, you know, I think 10, 15 years ago. Um, so Caveman Curling is okay. It's a, an okay, light, simple dexterity game that I think tried to do a little too much with those stupid special tokens that you get to use all the time. Uh, but what do I like about the game? So first and foremost, I do like the components. You know, uh, it's got very nice, thick, wooden pieces that are stunky, chunky, and sturdy, which is good. I like the board. You know, it's this thick parchment paper, which you definitely don't feel like you're going to rip or tear. And the way you store it in the game means it's not going to get uh, folds or creases because you actually roll it each time and then put it in there, which I think is a good idea as well. These little magnetic clasps that hold down the board are really nicely constructed as well. They do their job very very well which i think is a good thing the rules are easy to learn they're easy to teach it says age of seven plus i think uh aside from like the relics and the tokens you could easily play this with a four or five year old and you can just modify the rules where they get to like slide them down or do other different things so i like that aspect and i think this can be a good family game but for the most part though I, this is just a hard recommendation just because there's other better dexterity games that I like out there. There's a lot of other better dexterity games out there. Is this a bad game? No, it's not a bad game, but in a hobby of good and great and fantastic and spectacular, okay just does not cut it anymore. Maybe when this game came out, you know, it was good back then, but since then there have been a lot of better dexterity games that have came out. So in the end, Caveman Curling is a hard recommendation. If you really love dexterity games, 
then yeah, you might want to try this one out. But I, I have a hard time just recommend anybody go out and buy this because there's just better dexterity games out there on the market with or without the special abilities and with or without the house rules on the special abilities. Caveman Curling is still just purely an okay game. Now, if you can get more rocks, like if you can get rocks of different colors and make this a three or four player game, I think that makes the game better. But still, at the same time, it's just purely okay. So in the end, Caveman Curling, hard recommendation. This one is not going to be staying in my collection, even though it's not a bad game, it's just okay. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know. Curling, have you ever done it? For me personally, uh, I have a curling league that is really close to my house, and I actually know two people who are in the curling league. They love it, they swear by it, they say it's a lot of fun, and I know there's a, quite a few other people that are gamers that I've gamed with before that are in that said curling league, but I personally never have gotten the chance to do it, but I have a feeling in the future one day I will be doing it. This apparently just sounds like a great idea to get some you know, male camaraderie, sit around, drink a couple beers, beers, do some curling, and apparently it's pretty decent exercise as well. But curling, have you ever done it? Do you enjoy it? Do you disenjoy it? Yay or nay? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.